To start off, good afternoon, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. This is my first time in Dubai, and it is an absolute privilege to be a part of this vibrant dialogue in this extraordinary city. I'm here to talk about the automation of the news business. I believe that this advance is not only inevitable, but a necessary part of a trustworthy and independent press in the modern world, without which this cornerstone of civil society is at risk. I say to you that we must not fear the rise of the robots in this arena if we are to protect the open society. In the early 19th century, the German philosopher Hegel suggested that society has become modern when news replaces religion as the central source of guidance in our daily lives. The news sets the priorities of public debate, informing our collective civic duty and shaping our impressions of the world both within and most importantly beyond our immediate horizons. It shapes our sense of what's important, what is worth forming opinions on and discussing and what problems society must focus on finding answers to. We don't necessarily need to agree on how to fix them, but it's critical we have an open discourse so that innovative and workable solutions can be found. Facts about what is going on in our world are our axioms. The touchstone with reality that enables citizens, organizations, governments and their leaders to make decisions that enable a better future. In short, news is the chief creator of our social and political reality. As such, we need sources of information about the world that everyone can trust no matter their belief system or their role in society. I believe humans simply can't provide that on their own anymore. The news media's fundamental problem is not fake news, broken economics, or echo chambers. All of these are symptoms of something deeper. It is instead the inability of humans to keep up with modern information flows. Too much information moves too fast, leaving journalists unable to gather and analyze information in a way that scales, and consumers free to choose their sources from a plethora of reputable and not so reputable outlets. So how did we get here? 30 years ago, newspaper editors would wake up in the morning, go to work, and tell us what we should think about and talk about that day. They could do this because printing presses were expensive and choice on television and radio far more limited. The result was a public agenda set by a small number of people. Then the internet arrived and it has been driving a radical transformation in who produces news and how they disseminate it. Anyone with an internet connection can report on the world. In theory, this is great. Anyone can have a voice and participate in the public discourse. In practice, with the abundance of online content, newspapers have lost control to social networks and aggregators of distribution. These parties scale, and their lack of their own news production enables them to cater to every individual's preferences. The result is the perfect medium to capture advertising revenue. This creates a fundamental problem. It has become incredibly difficult to get readers' attention. And attention is a zero-sum game. There are only so many hours in the day. And the pairs of eyes that land on a story directly determines revenue through advertising, subscriptions, or otherwise. Some of the last decade's experiments have relied on testing and updating stories dynamically to drive page views. Some who practice that have resorted to clickbait. Why have these experiments come unstuck? It's not because Facebook tweaked their newsfeed algorithms, but because the production side remains fundamentally unchanged. Now, subscriptions have been a trend that's been growing over the last few years. The New York Times, the Washington Post have successfully executed strategies there, and other household names are following suit. Indeed, paywalls 
don't seem to hurt the quality of reporting. And it now seems clear that many consumers will pay for long-form, in-depth reporting online. 16% of US adults last year, according to Pew. Only there's a problem with this result. Paywalls make good quality information expensive and leave bad information free. A paywall trend is one towards a world where good quality information is reserved for those who can pay for it. That is not the world I want to live in. Sacred facts must be accessible to all. Nor is censorship the answer. It pushes people to seek out alternative sources for fear that the truth is being hidden from them. Regulation that restricts the freedom of speech, neither is the answer. The battle of ideas must be allowed to continue if society is to continue its forward march. So why is artificial intelligence the answer? Artificial intelligence in the newsroom will drive the cost of production down to levels that have never before been seen. Most of the discussion around saving the news business assumes that its practices work for the modern world and that its costs are largely fixed. And that the issue is actually just one of capturing revenue. I believe this is mistaken. We must shift our focus from revenue, from alternative monetization models for journalism, of which there are a number that already work, to the cost that makes those models scale. Laying off journalists is not the answer. It simply reduces output and revenue potential. Instead, we must reimagine how we go about our profession as journalists. Artificial intelligence is to be the great facilitator of this shift. And I believe this shift will open the floodgates to a new golden age of journalism. The printing press has been widely thought of as a technological innovation in distribution. In fact, it was an innovation that drove down the production cost of news, resulting in distribution at before unseen scale. It was Gutenberg's invention of the printing press in the 15th century, which permanently altered the information economy that uh, the next seismic change in the news media is technological and is one similarly of production. At Nowhere, we've built artificial intelligence that can gather, and secondary, gather original and secondary source from across the web, can figure out on its own what's going on in the world, analyze it, and produce its own account of world events in real time. More straightforward forms of artificial intelligence have already been implemented by a number of leading news organizations, largely to write structured, repeatable stories, like sports fixtures, earnings reports, and government data releases. But the domain of these prescriptive technologies is severely limited, and their pros often rather uninspiring. We can do this now for any and every story, domestic and international politics, business, economics, sports, entertainment, you name it. Moreover, we can do it at much greater speed, with a higher degree of accuracy, and with less bias in our story selection, source selection, and presentation. Machine intelligence is also today capable of fact checking. Our systems are doing it right now faster and more reliably than any journalist we've ever asked to has been able to. I'm afraid that anyone who tells you that only a human can fact check is a part of the problem our news industry faces. Such a statement is indicative of the fact that resources are in the wrong hands. After all, what does the process of fact checking really involve? We identify a claim and its evidence we find corroborating and contesting sources. We, as human journalists, then make a probability judgment as to how reliable those sources are. All of these steps can now be performed by artificial intelligence. Similarly, 
Recent advances over the last 18, 24 months in deep learning for natural language processing now enable us to write elegant, compelling, and succinct prose. I believe that within five years, you can expect the majority of the daily news agenda you consume to have at least been drafted by an artificial intelligence. AI can generate story ideas. It can prioritize editorial workflow. It can, of course, edit writing for grammar and spelling mistakes. It can translate your story into other languages and gather sources from them. I think you see where I'm going. The result of this technology, even including the absolutely necessary continued human oversight at each of these stages, is a production cost multiple orders of magnitude below where it has ever been. Artificial intelligence that is capable of writing a compelling story on any breaking news event already exists. We've built it. But the cost of production and resulting return on investment and resource allocation available for original news gathering is not the only benefit. Artificial intelligence can, and in the right hands, will make the majority of news we consume more transparent and trustworthy, less partisan, journalists' working lives more fulfilling, and our profession stronger than it has ever been in its ability to hold power to account. The news business knows how to render its own mechanics almost invisible and hard to question. It makes very little reference to its own assumption-laden perspectives. News organizations of every political stripe fail to acknowledge publicly that they do not merely report on the world, they choose what in the world to report on and how to report it. In doing so, news organizations are constantly at work crafting a distinct sometimes false, often partisan, and always subjective observation on the state of the world. Now, there is often presumed to be a conflict between the black box of artificial intelligence and transparency. I believe this misses the point. The inputs and outputs of an algorithm and its critical steps in judging the veracity of a piece of information can be unpacked and made public far more easily than a human journalist's thinking. Artificial intelligence is the best tool we now have to produce and defend the accurate information that keeps civil society robust and on the path of progress. C.P. Scott, the influential early 20th century editor of the Manchester Guardian, said that comment is free, but facts are sacred. As journalists, we must prioritize those facts above the subjective interpretation of events while recognizing that our own interpretations will necessarily be subjective. Kellyanne Conway was right. There are alternative facts. There usually are alternative facts that either party can invoke in a dialogue to argue their point of view more persuasively. Both of those facts could be true. To discard that claim as misplaced is to discard the reality of debate. The vast majority of what today's major respected news organizations report and consumers consume is not untrue, but is more often than not reported in such a way, intentionally or not, that it tells a particular story. Now, artificial intelligence cannot entirely remove bias from news. All sources and journalists come to the table with a limited set of experiences. But we can now consider every relevant piece of information digitally available on the web to a story in order to establish what is biased, what is likely false, and what is likely to be closest to reality with a very, very high degree of confidence. This technology could be used to further exacerbate and confirm consumers' biases, as search and recommendation algorithms already do. But it can also be used to identify these biases. Even the biases so deeply ingrained, like our very own, 
that we as humans struggle to recognize them. I believe the first step in rebuilding trust is to publicly and readily accept our limitations as human journalists. We must continue the restless fight to preserve a world where the pursuit of truth is valued above all else. But to do so, we must embrace the technology that will enable us to fight fire with fire. Most of my journalism colleagues, I'm sure many of you in this room, indeed profess to seek and tell the truth. Unfortunately, all reports of it are subjective interpretations. Fake news is an extreme of this phenomena without regard for any truth, but it has been around for millennia. It is much easier to tell a lie that can take the form of any number of infinite possibilities than it is to do the work involved in establishing the truth. In order to assess these many and varied sources, to borrow the famous phrase, before a lie is halfway around the world and we haven't yet got our shoes on, we need to operate at speed, as close to the speed that information can travel as possible. We need the help of intelligent machines. Machine learning enables us to analyze the veracity of this information in time to chase the lie out of the door. We can actually learn the biases of reporting and identify fake news with a higher degree of accuracy and incomparable speed than humans can. Turns out, we're actually pretty bad at it, which shouldn't really surprise anyone. So what does this mean for us journalists? Well, I believe we can expect to do far more of the work we signed up for. High impact, complex, and nuanced decision making and investigations that are still very much and will remain the prerogative of human journalists. Not only that, but editorial checks and balances must remain. News organizations must still be accountable to their public, and humans must thus still be involved at every step of the process. I expect the news businesses that put artificial intelligence at the very core of their reporting process to be the largest employers of journalists worldwide within a decade. Furthermore, I expect them to be by far and away the most profitable. Human journalists will be more valuable than ever in unearthing information, and crucially, their work will be sustainably financed. Finally, it will be far harder for anyone to sustain a lie in the public domain. Their sources, alternative sources, and competing viewpoints, and yes, alternative facts that are true but support a different narrative, will be instantly accessible. The historical public record of trustworthiness will be open for all to see. Artificial intelligence will completely reshape the current media landscape and is already beginning to do so. Those news organizations that are built around it will be the ones that prosper. As I said earlier, we must continue to be restless in our efforts to discover, verify, and report accurate information about the world. We now need the help of machines to do this effectively. Artificial intelligence is not sufficient to solve our current information crisis. Editorial and investigative responsibilities remain, but it is the necessary heart. If we don't embrace it as an industry, a trustworthy, independent press is at risk. And without that, our primary guidepost to the world and our ability as a society to make the decisions that create a better one will be under ever greater threat. It is in all of our best interests to embrace this sea change and build the core of our profession anew. Thank you for listening.